Hey guys, today we're going to take a look again at the Polaroid Link 6 inch phone. This ginormous of a thing comes at a price of $299 and I've been using it for a day now. And to be honest, it feels really great for what it's worth. It is running Android KitKat 4.4, which you can probably see from here, the app drawer. I don't expect it to jump over to Marshmallow or Lollipop anytime soon, or at all even. The phone runs KitKat fine and it should just stick to it. Um, the overall feel of this phone is, I'd say, decent. I love the bezel around it, which gives it a better feel and just a more premium look to it. Um, the device is really huge, diagonally 6 inches. So watching videos and you know pictures are really really great. So here's a little sample of what you know you should expect from it watching YouTube. Okay, let me pop over the YouTube link real quick. Just for copyright purposes, let's just go over to my channel and watch the unboxing. So yeah, it's really great. And here's a little preview of what images might look like on this phone. Give me a sec to pop this up. It's a good gallery. So I've got zero images. But let's take one real quick, see how it looks. Oh, that's me right there. How do I switch this over? There you go. Quick snapshot. Let's grab this real quick. So yeah, it's not bad. The camera is at five megapixels, so you wouldn't be taking any DSLR type quality images, but it works. Again, you gotta you gotta keep in mind that this phone is about three hundred dollars. Um, what else to show you guys? Web web browsing is great. There's no doubt about that. There's it's smooth. Everything, no pixelation. And what I love about this phone so much is just that single home button right there, capacitive touch, and everything else is hidden away unless you pull up right here and you have your back home and you got your <coughs> task switcher. So I'll pull them aside. Really simple. Pulling down a notification, you have all your toggles right here. Brightness. So the thing I did notice about this phone while using it was although it's really big and you would expect a long battery life this thing only comes with about 2100 milliamp hours and gets me about three-fourths of a day which is enough because I plug it in every single night but to somebody that uses really heavily they probably wouldn't get most use out of it and this phone oh let me pop up the Geekbench for you guys and see how it performs So you got one gig of RAM, you're running the Mali 400 GPU, 1.3 gigahertz CPU, and as I said, Android 4.4.2. So while it's running, I just let you guys know it's not a flagship phone or anything of that sort. It, 
I do see some bits of um, lag when using a bunch of apps, opening them at one time, especially when opening Google Maps, but it works. So yeah, let this finish up right here. It's taking its sweet time right now. Usually when it takes this long, it hints that it's struggling quite a bit using this benchmarking tool. And we know that Geekbench 3 is pretty intensive. So I'm not expecting such a high score for this phone. Oh, and while using Geekbench 3, I've noticed um, a battery test tool, which at this point I have no idea what it does. I tried it a couple times, but all it does is just count down the minutes and it dims my screen. So if you guys know anything about it, let me know. So yeah, here you have the score, which is very unimpressive. You have a single score of 341 and a multi-score of 644. I would expect this out of an iPhone 4S or less even, maybe an iPhone 4, but here you have, here are the details, you have a 1.3 gigahertz processor, 1 gig of RAM, yeah, blah blah blah, we went through all that already, so yeah, um, this is an overall look of the phone and those who are using Android, you guys are very familiar with this. And yeah, that's it. See you guys.